The first thing I like to do is to read the very last sentence. So which of the following autopsy findings is most likely seen? Then I go to the answer choices and I kind of read through very briefly lung hyperinflation, alveolar hyaline membranes, intraalveolar wall destruction, intraalveolar hemorrhage, and cardiomegaly. And you'll get better at this with time. But what you'll find happening is as you're reading these answer choices through, we know we haven't read the vignette, but we're starting to think about lung hyperinflation. What would that be from? What would be causing lung hyperinflation? Well, maybe that's going to be, um, you know, some type of, I don't know, obstructive pathology. Maybe that's what this, uh, this vignette would start to look like if that's what answer choice, if it was answer choice A that was correct. Um, if it was cardiomegaly, um, maybe they'd be describing a patient who was coming in in florid heart failure. So as you're reading through the answer choices in this kind of first brief glance, you're already starting to think about what the what the differential could be and what you would be looking for in the vignette. And then it's really nice when you get back to the vignette and you start reading from a 55 year old, you might just find out that something kind of clicks and oh, that sounds a lot like answer choice C. And this process will just get faster and faster over time. It's also okay if you read the answer choices and you have no idea what answer choice C is going on about. Um, you'll be able to use test taking skills and other information in the question to help you get to that answer choice. So which of the following autopsy findings is most likely seen? We skim through the answer choices. Maybe there's some things you know, buzzing around in our brain about what each of these might be and what they might represent. And then we go to the beginning of the vignette. So we see a 55-year-old alcoholic male is hospitalized with severe abdominal pain associated with nausea and vomiting. Lab studies show marked elevation of amylase and lipase. His condition deteriorates during the hospitalization and he develops severe respiratory distress. There are crackles bilaterally on physical examination. Patient fails to respond to mechanical ventilation and 100% oxygen dies soon after because of this worsening respiratory insufficiency. So what you wanna pay attention to in this question is demographics, 55 year old, male, alcoholic. Then you wanna think about vitals. Are they mentioning anything? Here they don't give you necessarily specific vitals. They do say he's failing to respond to mechanical ventilation and 100% oxygen. So perhaps you can guess what some of his vitals are in terms of oxygen saturation. Um, the, you wanna be focusing on signs and symptoms. So things like abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, severe respiratory distress, crackles on physical examination. They may not give you a full physical examination, and if they don't, it's important what they do give you. That's very often the key to making this diagnosis. And then of course, anytime there's an image, you wanna make sure you really pay attention to it. I will say, as someone who um, was not it was and is not naturally gifted in radiology. Um, it's very rare that your, your, your answer um, will rely completely on being able to interpret the image. Um, I think I've seen that maybe once in my tutoring that there was a question like that. You're almost always gonna have supporting information in that vignette that can help you make that diagnosis. And you might find that oh gosh, what is this x-ray supposed to be showing? And then you start to read the vignette and you see, oh, severe respiratory distress. This kind of looks like whiteout lung. This looks like something I've seen before, kind of in an ARDS type of picture. And you'll start to kind of make those connections, um, even if you don't instantly recognize what's being shown um, on the image. I had this experience with a student recently with a, um, an aortic dissection, and she couldn't kind of recognize that thin little you know, membrane that you see on the CT that's the dissection. Um, but once she was able to read the vignette, and they were talking about you know, um, kind of severe chest pain or recent car accident, sort of this high-speed trauma, then she thought, oh, dissection, maybe that's what that little floating kind of membrane is in the scan of the aorta. So you'll, don't panic if you see an image in radiology is not your calling. Same thing with EKGs or heart murmur sounds that they play. But all of these things are gonna be really important to breaking down a question. Make sure you also, in the answer choices, this can be tricky and 
this is really where the writers of this exam um, have their fun. So you want to pay attention to synonyms. So, um, you know, interalveolar, intraalveolar, these all sort of sound very similar. You want to pay attention to that, especially when you're pressed for time. If there's any new terminology, um, as you're learning these, going through these questions, pay attention to those terms. And think about, as you sort of did when you initially read through the answer choices, think about what would make that answer choice correct. So cardiomegaly, what would make that the right answer? What would you need to see in this patient?